This is part two of section 3.2. We're going to talk about if and only if statements. If P and Q represent two simple statements, then the phrase P if and only if Q is symbolized with a double arrow. This is called a biconditional, bi meaning two and the arrow goes in two directions. A compound statement formed with an if and only if, if statement, that's what we mean by a biconditional. And because if and only if is long and mathematicians are lazy, we usually write if and only if as IFF. Okay, biconditionals are conditional statements that retain the same truth value if the antecedent and consequent are reversed. So basically what this is saying is that you have a biconditional if, if P then Q is true and also if Q then P. We cannot always flip around a conditional statement, but if you can, it is a biconditional. It works in both directions. So what you're likely to see here, as far as phrases go, this is exactly the way it, it was defined above. P, if and only if, Q. A person is an unmarried male, if and only if that person is a bachelor. The definition of a bachelor is an uh, unmarried male, it's absolutely true, no matter what, which direction you go. Q, if and only if P. This is reversing the same statement. So these are, these two statements are like those reversed, except for the if and only if part, if you took out the only if part. A person is a bachelor, if and only if that person is an unmarried male. Same statements. And then here, if P then Q, and if Q, then P. This is again, if you, have, if you can reverse the conditional, you have a biconditional. If a person is an unmarried male, then that person is a bachelor. And if a person is a bachelor, then that person is an unmarried male. All right, and then the necessary and sufficient parts. We said that we can flip them around, and these two both say that. P is necessary and sufficient for Q and Q is necessary and sufficient for P. These are, all of these are saying the same thing, okay? We're going, we're soon going to be working some problems with all of this stuff, but we do need a slightly bit more, slight more. Just as in arithmetic and algebra, a statement written within parentheses should be completed first, okay? Commas, in an English statement translate to parentheses in a symbolic logic statement. So we do have to pay attention to our punctuation there. Commas tell us to put in parentheses. And if a statement is written without parentheses, the statements before and after what we call the dominant connective should be grouped. This is kind of like following order of operations. We have um, a hierarchy of of all of these different connectives, and it tells us what we have to do first. Okay, so here is the dominance. The most important thing is the biconditional. So if you see a double arrow, you need to put the stuff on either side of it in parentheses. Then the conditional, so if you're seeing a single arrow, that's the next most important thing. And then conjunction and disjunction, those are co-equal. So if you see an and or an or, that would be the part you do next. And then negation is the last one. So look here, okay? So if we have this statement here without parentheses, the first thing you look for is your most dominant. I do not have a biconditional, but I do have a conditional. It's right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put parentheses around each part here because I know that this and this go together. And then I look inside here. Well, that doesn't really need to be simplified anymore. That's really clear. So a clarified statement would look like this. As opposed to this one, which is similar, but here our um, conditional is here. So we need to put these two together. Okay. Okay, now here we have a biconditional and a conditional. Biconditionals are more important, so we group on either side of that. And you know, if this were more than just a simple P, I would put parentheses around that as well. 
here. We have the biconditional here. So I would put parentheses around here. Okay, and then here, my most important connective is the um, conditional. And here I have things on both sides of it. So I'm gonna put parentheses around each one. And then I would break this up any, even further if I needed to. Okay. And then you could have something like this, P and Q or R. And this is ambiguous meaning. In conjunction and disjunction, they're co-equal. And there's not even the whole work from left to right thing that there is in the order of operations. This is just not clear enough for us to know what they want us to do. Not at all. Okay. So we're going to start these example problems. And we are given two phrases. You are human and you have feathers. So P is you are human, Q is you have feathers. And what we're being asked to do is we're supposed to translate these English phrases into symbols using the symbology we learned already, okay? You do not have feathers if you are human, okay? So you do not have feathers if you are human. So if you are human is the first part, correct? That's the if statement. So if you are human, that's P. Then, if you are human, then you do not have feathers. Q is you have feathers, and we want the negation of that. So this is not Q. If P, then not Q. If you are human, then you do not have feathers. Okay, let's try this one. You are not human if you have feathers. Here the if statement is the feathers, which is Q. So you have feathers, you have feathers. So this is Q and then you are not human. So not human would be not P. Okay. You are human or you do not have feathers. You are human is P, or is the V. You do not have feathers. Q is you have feathers and we need it the negative. So P or not Q. Okay. You are not human and you do not have feathers. Okay, so I wrote our statements right here so we, I could bring them up. You are not human, that would be not P. And you do not have feathers, so that would be not Q. Okay, being human is sufficient for not having feathers. Now remember, P is sufficient for Q. It's the same thing as P, if P then Q. So P is sufficient, so whatever comes first, the sufficient part should come first. So being human is sufficient. Well, being human, that is our P statement, is sufficient for not having feathers, and that would be not Q. And then one more here. You are human if and only if you do not have feathers. You are human is P. If and only if is the double arrow. You do not have feathers would be not Q. Okay. 